Risk and return and the relationship between risk and return is a wonderful place to start this section because a lot of this section comes down to balancing risk and return. Now we're going to talk about what return is, we're going to talk about what risk is, but we'll start by just looking at the relationship between risk and return. And there's two different ways we can look at this relationship between risk and return. One is more risk requires more return. The more risk somebody is taking on, the greater the amount of return that they're going to expect for taking on more risk. The other way of looking at it is less risk requires less return. If you're not taking on as much risk, you don't need as much return. Now, when we talk about this relationship between risk and return, we are usually kind of thinking about it from the standpoint of the investor, the person who's making the investment. The more risk that they take on with that investment, the more return they're going to require. And that's absolutely correct. But we need to remember that if somebody's making an investment, there has to be another side to that equation, another side to that transaction. If somebody's making an investment, somebody's raising finance. If somebody's making an investment in shares, somebody is selling shares. If somebody's making an investment in a bond, somebody's issuing the bond. And it's the same relationship from the standpoint of the person who's borrowing the money, except instead of it's the return, it's the cost. The greater the risk that people perceive this investment to have, the greater the, the greater the rate they're going to have to pay in order to get people to be willing to make that investment. And similarly, if your investment or the, what you're, how you're trying to raise money is perceived in the market to be less risky, you're not going to have to pay as much to get that money to raise that financing. And so we need to keep in mind that there's two sides to this transaction. If somebody is making an investment, somebody is being invested in, somebody is raising money. If somebody's issuing finance, somebody's issuing shares, or somebody's issuing debt, then they also need people who are willing to make an investment in order for that to actually kind of become raising finance. If somebody's trying to make an investment, they have to find somebody who's willing to sell the shares or issue the debt. So we need both sides of that transaction in order for this to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at the return element and some of the issues that we have in terms of calculating the return. And then separately, we'll look at risk and some of the different types of risk. And that's kind of the foundation here. And then as we go through all the rest of these topics, talking about long-term finance, talking about international issues about this, raising finance and all those things, we're looking at this kind of this risk and return as the foundation to all of it. Okay, we're trying to assess the risk to determine what type of return is going to be required in order for us to make that investment. So we start by looking at the annual rate of return. Well, the return is the income that's received by an investor on an investment. Okay, how much money you make. The rate of return is simply a percentage. It's the percentage of the principal amount that was invested. The amount of return that we get on an investment is a function of three things. How much was invested, the length of time that it was invested for, and the rate of return on that investment. Okay? Different investments are going to have different amounts. They're going to have different rates of return. They're going to have a different time period involved. But these are the three functions that are going to determine the amount of the return. Now, when we're talking about a rate of return, what we're talking about is a percentage. And so when we're calculating that, we're taking that rate of return quoted as an annual rate. So when we talk about an annual rate, what this means is what percentage of the amount invested would be earned if the investment were held for one full year. Right? What would be the return if we held the investment for one full year? And we'll look at some of the situations where we have to kind of make adjustments to be able to calculate this. The formula for the annual rate of return is the return received on one year's investment divided by the average balance of the amount invested. What was the average amount that was invested over that time period that the investment was outstanding? We do have a few kind of rules, guides that we need to remember and keep in mind when we're calculating this annual rate of return. First, 
When the income received for the investment is less than one year, we need to annualize that income. We need to know what would it have been for a whole year. So if this is one month of return, we need to multiply it by 12. If it's six months of return, we need to multiply it by two. We need to get what was the amount of, or what would the amount of return have been if it had been outstanding for an entire year. The second rule is that the amount invested needs to be the average balance of the amount that was invested during whatever time period it is up to a year. So if it's a six month investment, what was the average amount that was invested during that six months? Okay, what was the average amount that was being invested during whatever time period is being looked at? Now, the third rule, if the funds were invested for less than a full year, we're still going to assume that that average balance during the period had been invested for the full year because remember we've made the return an annual return. So if it's an annual return, we still have, would have assumed that that amount, that average amount, was going to have been invested for the entire year. Now these are fairly straightforward rules, but we're going to do a few examples here just to make certain that we have these calculations and we understand what's going on in this calculation of the annual rate of return. In our first example, an investor invests $10,000 for one year and earns a $500 return on the investment. At the end of one year, the investor receives back $10,500. What is the investor's rate of return? Well, this is kind of that basic, straightforward situation. We returned $500. We had a return of $500. And $10,000 was invested out, was invested during the whole period. And so our annual rate of return is the $500 divided by $10,000, 5%. Okay, this is just a basic, straightforward example. And the second example, what if our investor invests $10,000 for only six months and earns $250 on the investment? What's the investor's rate of return now? Well, since it's only for six months, we need to take that $250 return and multiply it by two. Because if they earn $250 over six months, they would have earned $500 over the whole year. And so we take that return of $250, multiply it by two. The average investment is still $10,000. It was only outstanding for six months, but we assume that that investment would be outstanding the entire period. And so again, we're still at a 5% return. In the third example, we make it a little bit more. Our investor invests $10,000 for three months then withdraws $4,000 and leaves the remaining $6,000 on deposit for another three months. At the end of the six months, the investor withdraws the remaining $6,000 along with income received of $200. The question is, what is the investor's rate of return? Well, we first need to calculate what is the average balance of the investment over that six month period. And the numbers are relatively straightforward and easy to see. $10,000 was outstanding for three months, $6,000 was outstanding for three months, and so the average was $8,000. They had a return of $200 during that time period, but that was a six-month time period, so we need to annualize that, multiply it by two, and so that gives us $400 is the return. Now, that $8,000 average balance, we assume that it was invested for one full year, even though it was only invested for six months. But if we annualize the return, we also need to annualize that average amount. And so the rate of return, $400 divided by $8,000 is still 5%. Okay, so what we've looked at here is just return and the rate of return. This is half of that balance between risk and return. But we need to understand what we're talking about with the rate, the rate of return. It's an annual amount, so we need, may need to do a little bit of calculations to get to the annual amount, but this is the return that the investor has made out of the investment and how that is calculated. What we're going to look at next are some of the different types of risk that the investor needs to be taken into account to try to assess what is the risk of the investment so they can determine what is the appropriate required rate of return for that investor based on the amount of risk that they are accepting or taking on in that individual investment.